Did you know that Nigeria has eight littoral states? Lagos, Ogun, Ondo, Delta, Rivers, Bielsa, Cross River, and of course my state, Aquaibom. These states have in recent times become the focus of Nimasa in the quest to help explode our nation's maritime potentialities. Hello and welcome. It's Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. As always, my name is Ubon Yesen and I will be your guide on this voyage. State, and you are watching Nimasa this week. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. And on today's episode, I take you back to my earlier remarks about the literal states. What has the DG of Nimasa, Dr. Bashir Jamal, been up to? The Director General has been meeting with governors of our literal states to explore opportunities for cooperation and harnessing of those comparative maritime advantages that are unique to each of those eight literal states. And in this week's episode, it was the turn of Delta States. We'll find out more on DG's diary. And of course, our other regulars on the program. So if you're ready, it's anchors away. In a renewed attempt to reassure the international community of security for vessels within Nigeria's territorial waters, the Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Dr. Bashur Jamo, hosted the Ambassador of Poland to Nigeria, Ambassador Joanna Magdalena Taranaskan, at the agency's headquarters in Lagos. The bilateral meeting addressed some of the concerns as it relates to the recent incident and happening at the Gulf of Guinea and sought ways Poland could be of assistance to the agency and Nigerian government. Also at the bilateral meeting, both parties discussed areas of interest, including inland ports, and plans to strengthen the relationship between the Polish government and the Massa, particularly in the areas of training, technical support, and cooperation. As the ambassador of Poland, I'd like to say that Poland and Nigeria have enjoyed friendly bilateral relations for decades, and we'd like to look for avenues of cooperation in the maritime sector between our two countries and that is the purpose of my visit to the headquarters of NIMASA. I think that there is a lot that we can do together like share experience, uh, knowledge, uh, know-how and uh, look forward to a transfer of technologies in the maritime sector and also work on improving the security, uh, the security in the Gulf of Guinea. In his response, Dr. Jamo said he is not unaware that the challenges of maritime security are enormous and the international community is worried and disturbed. You can recollect I was with the United States uh, Ambassador, I was with Denmark, I was with the uh, European Union, and a number of host of others. They came, we discussed the effort we are putting in place to ensure that we have uh, the maximum security in our own waterways. Dr. Jamo also used the opportunity to present the NEMASA 24 hours distress response lines, which can be reached for rapid interventions in cases of security and safety emergency. Finally, the Director General appreciated the efforts of the Polish government towards collaborating with NEMASA and Nigeria to address maritime insecurity, especially in the Gulf of Guinea. The Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency played host to a delegation of shipping agencies in the country under the Shipping Agencies Association of Nigeria. In his initial address, Andrew Lich congratulated the DG on his appointment as the DG of Mimasa, 
having been the first time they are meeting since his appointment, and thanked him for creating time out of his busy schedule to host them. Andrew Leach raised the issue of maritime security and how to improve it, seeking more information about the Deep Blue project and the timeline for the deployment of the assets. Also, he sought to know about the secure anchorage area and the current situation of things. As we're here to, to understand a little bit more from yourself and from Nimasa, um, timelines, what sort of assets are being deployed, um, specifically the case of the secure anchorage area and its closure, what uh, structures are in place, uh, what procedures and protocols are in place to replace the formerly the secure anchorage area. In his response, the DG highlighted the assets of the Deep Blue project being put in place by the agency and the government and that the assets will be deployed soon to address the issue of security on Nigeria's territorial waters. More so, Nigeria is playing a leading role in securing the Gulf of Guinea through the Yaoundé architecture of the Interregional Coordinating Center, ICC. The agency created Maritime Intelligence Unit. And what is the duty of this Maritime Intelligence Unit? The duty of this Maritime Intelligence Unit is to try as much as possible to continue extracting information in an intelligence manner with a view of preventing the attack. The asset I mentioned earlier, where the asset we have to react from any attack. Why shall we wait until somebody reacts? Uh, uh, attack, then we will now react. So we are trying to be proactive now, trying to see how we can prevent the attack. The visit affords the Shipping Agencies Association of Nigeria to raise and discuss a lot of issues that are of interest to both the association and the agency, seeking clarification when necessary. The visit was also used as an opportunity to test the Nemasa 24 hours distress response lines which can be reached for rapid interventions in cases of security and safety emergency. We have a contact center with the, uh, which is under Global Maritime Distress System with the number 080-30-68-51-67. And then we have BHF Radio under channel 16. Andrew Lich on behalf of the delegation thanks the DG for hosting them and pledged the support to the success of the DG and that of the agency. As part of the stakeholders' sensitization on the development of the maritime sector, the Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamo, visited the Governor of Delta State, Dr. Ifeanyi Akowa at the Government House Asaba. Dr. Jamu stressed that Namasa is determined to bring the literal states together for partnership as major stakeholders in the maritime industry. He stated that Delta had benefited from three projects of the agency in the last seven years and listed them as Nigerian Maritime University, Okerin Koko, the Masa Science and Technical College, Okoloba proposed ship repairs industry and educational scholarships to over 1,000 Deltans to study maritime related courses. I would like to sincerely appreciate for the opportunity given to us to make sure that possible of time to receive us and also to add that we are aware of the enormous contributions you have been given to the university in Nigeria Maritime University for its not to be what it's supposed to be. I am proud to say, in the whole country, we don't have maritime university, other than the Nigerian Maritime University or Kerenkoko situation situated in Delta states. So, we will appreciate your continuous cooperation with this university, while we continue to give the support Thank you so very much. Thank you. In his response, Governor Okowa acknowledged that Nimasa had done well in Delta, but needed to do more to enable the state to reap the dividends in the maritime sector. 
He called for the opening up of the nation's ports because of the importance of economic development and job creation, saying a well-developed maritime business has the tendency to address major challenges in the nation's economy. In a certificate presentation event, the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa, Dr. Bashir Jomo, described seafarers as the lifeblood of shipping. He made this assertion at the agency headquarters as the special guest during the presentation of certificates to the seafarers trained by Nimasa. Dr. Jamo noted that his administration has trained nothing less than 788 seafarers in different areas and capacities across different zones of a country in the last one year. He said his administration is committed not only to get the right people, but also to get the people right. The seafarers were trained in standards of training certification and watchkeeping for seafarers. International Ship and Port Facility Security Training, ISPS, Efficient Deck Handling, EDH, Dynamic Positioning, Survival Craft, Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, GMDSS, and so on. Dr. Jamo evaluated the awardees to test how well they're grounded in what they've been taught. He admonished them to continue to seek improved knowledge in their chosen field and develop themselves for a rewarding career in the shipping industry. So far, from uh, March last year to now, we have a total number of uh, 788 uh, CPRs trained. And uh, the training went on different uh, areas and capacities. In view of the COVID-19, we were were unable to assemble the 780 personnel because we must abide by the rules and the guidelines of NCDC. The seafarers thanked the DG for the opportunity and gesture of the agency and promised to be good ambassadors of the country. Hello viewers, welcome to another segment of Know Your Conventions. This week we'll be speaking on the Maritime Labour Convention 2006. And we meet today is the Director of Maritime Labour Services, Mr. Olayemi Abbas. Welcome to the segment. And um, his able assistant, um, Assistant Director Dr. Amos Kuji. Welcome to the show too. Thank you for having me. Like I said earlier, my guest today will provide insight into what the Maritime Labour Convention 2006 is all about. So we start with you, sir, Mr. Um, Olayemi Abbas. Can you just give us a background into what the Maritime Labour Convention 2006 is about? The Maritime Labour Convention 2006, otherwise known as MLC 2006, is actually the fourth pillar of shipping. and. Um, as it goes, it was um, a product of the ILO, the International Labour Organization, working in conjunction with the International Maritime Organization, was um, ratified by Nigeria in 2013. So MLC 2006 deals with the Bill of Rights for seafarers, and as it goes, means it has to do with the living, the working conditions on board and ashore, the terms of engagement and employment of seafarers and the whole uh, holistic view in one convention of what used to be different conventions guiding uh, seafarers welfare, employment, engagement uh, around the world. So we have one document which deals with all the issues surrounding seafarers. 
Well, thank you for that insight. So basically, the MLC 2006 is a codification of um, seafarer labor rights. We that's, can, that's, that's the right exactly. one. That's okay. the right one. Oh, um, so, um, Dr. Kuji, do you want to give us insights on how does this um, convention work? Who does it apply to? How is it implemented in Nigeria and so forth? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, in terms of application, there are two sides to it. Uh, first, uh, it applies the human element, the seafarers, as mentioned. All seafarers, it applies to them. And the second side, the ship. And then when you go down again the ladder, uh, we are talking about ships that operate internationally. And of course, the convention did specify the tonnage. So on international voyages, we're talking about 500 gross ton and above. And then within the country, yes, we have also 500 gross ton operating within the port. Of course, there are exceptions or exemptions. It applies to uh, public or private owned vessels that operate commercially. And then um, you have exemption. It does not apply to fishing vessels. Uh, vessels built traditionally and of course um, warships and the Navy auxiliary ships doesn't apply to them. So this is the nature of the application. So in terms of application we're talking about uh, merchant vessels of a specific gross tonnage. Definitely. So you mentioned that there are two aspects to it. The convention applies as the MLC 2006 to the human element which is the seafarers and to the um, vessels, the merchant vessels. So for seafarers, what, what rights do they have under this convention? In terms of implementation, how can you throw more light for us on this? The convention focus on their living and working condition. Oh, okay, and when you can look at, in terms of rights, uh, we're looking at a fundamental right as it applies to any other citizens. And of course, employment right when we talk about employment right, we are looking at that the, the condition of employment must be in line with the minimum standards of the convention. This is a right. And while on board, uh, they need to be protected against uh, within the environment where they live. It must be conducive enough, and this is a right. And um, uh, it is an obligation for ship owners to ensure that this is maintained at all times to secure their living and working condition while on board or while at work at all times. That's actually very crucial given the fact that uh, most times these vessels, especially an international going vessel, we find them at sea for months. So it's actually very important that they, are, they have good um, living conditions, their rights are protected on board and all that. your voyage guide. And today on this voyage, we are stationed by a foreign bulk carrier vessel, the identity MV Desert Challenger, as you can see right here. And with me on this voyage to give us a brief explanation on why we are here is engineer Miss Jide Chuku Ben Njoku. You're welcome to come in. Thank you very much, ma'am. Just give us a brief explanation on what post take control is about. It's about, uh, it's basically the inspection of foreign ships coming into Nigerian waters. So as long as it's not bearing the Nigerian flag, it's also a foreign vessel. So we always inspect them. So there's a difference. There's port state control and there's flag state. Flag state is for only Nigerian vessels. Port state is for foreign vessels. So this is a foreign vessel. It's owned by a Greek, uh, a Greek company. And they come in to, to discharge their 
their goods, and the goods is wheat, they carry wheat. But so far, what Post is basically about is inspecting, checking their papers, making sure that they, they are doing the basic, the minimum safety standards for the ships nationwide or worldwide. The Port State Control Unit of the Marine Safety and Seafarer Standard of Nimasa carried out Port State Control on the vessel Desert Challenger. As they climbed the Galway, they submit themselves to the Galway Watch for the proper identification before they were allowed access to the ship. We are here on, on board uh, the vessel. It's a boat carrier by name uh, Desert Challenger. Ship particulars were demanded including all the trading certificates of the ship as well as the list and particulars of crew members. The first part of this inspection, uh, we have asked for the ship trading certificate from the master. We also asked for the crew list and vessel particulars. So one of our engineers, Engineer Cyril, is going to do the documentation. He's going to check the ship certificate one after the other. So I and the other engineers, we are going to go around the ship. We are going to go to the bridge in the room, the deck. The bridge of the vessel was visited to inspect all the navigational equipment as well as the deck to check the functionality of the magnetic compass. We are in the steering gear compartment, so we are going to carry out emergency steering test. So somebody is going to the bridge to respond, so we are going to operate the steering ram, both port and starboard. We are going to operate from here. Uh, while testing, you monitor the rudder and cooler indicator. We test a uh, starboard side, this ship, then port side, this ship. Sometimes maybe angle 30, it's okay. So it's testing to the starboard side now. See that black one. Okay, midship, starboard side, uh, port side. So the steering gear is working very well. Fire equipments were also checked for the vessel readiness to control and handle fire outbreaks. The lifeboat, life raft, pyrotechnics, and other emergency evacuation gadgets were also three, checked. Four life boats. So the lifeboat engine is started. These are, uh, they call it uh, pyrotechnics. Uh, when uh, the lifeboat is launched, maybe there is an emergency, they abandon the ship. It, it, it goes with the ship for signal. The, the vessel is well maintained, and the vessel is very young in age. Thank you very much. I remain Bukola Papagene. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. It's time for the tweet from the DG of Nimasa from his Twitter handle at Jamu Bashir. And this week, it's on his interactions with the chief executive of the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, MPA, where he reflects on hashtag Singapore collaborations. Singapore is one of the top five leading maritime administrations. The Massa is proud of our over two decades of nautical friendship. Thanks, Ms. Kwali Hoon, CEO, Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, for renewing our partnership for development. To continue this conversation with the DJ of the Massa online, use the hashtag, the voice of maritime. At his Twitter handle, Jamo Bashir. Do remember also our official social media handles across all the various platforms, all at Nimasa Official. And the official Nimasa website, where week on week we continue to provide you with relevant information relating to issues affecting the Nigerian maritime domain.
Thank you for watching today's episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime. I hope you found useful information that can help you make meaning out of Nigeria's maritime potentialities. Let me leave you with the famous Dutch proverb that says, everyone must roll with the oars he has. Nigeria has a lot of opportunities for growth in the maritime domain. You have a role to play. My name is Ubong Isien. Until I see you next time, stay on course.